Today I would like to show you how to draw, pose, and animate skirts in a more comprehensive way that makes it a little bit simpler. So the difficulty with skirts is that they are an article of clothing and clothing is very difficult when you're first starting out to figure out how it should fold, how it should lay, and how it should move. Skirts have a beveled design, meaning that they are smaller at the top and larger at the bottom. This influences their movement and their styling a lot more than you might think. So for our skirts, we have to keep in mind the shape of them as we're drawing them. This outward motion this expansion of fabric is going to provide all of the characteristics of the movement and posing of the skirt. After that, we're going to consider the different ways that you can bevel and fold the ends of a skirt. So here you can see that we have a very different fold pattern than say a looser, more flowy skirt which is different from a looser pleated skirt, which is different from a large pleat skirt, which is different from a tight starched pleat skirt. I recommend starting out with pleating specifically because it is a very easy way to see the way that a skirt moves and folds without having to do any sort of extra work, look at any sort of extra references you draw it with curves and with folds that way you have definitive guidelines to show you how it's going to move so for example first things first we're going to talk about how the skirt interacts with the rest of the body i'm just going to draw a quick example body and pose here nothing fancy nothing too dynamic all right, so the way that a skirt usually sits on a body is it's going to sit around the waist area. Sometimes they'll be higher, sometimes they'll be lower, but for today's example, we're just going to have it sit right there. And depending on the hefty weight of the fabric, it's going to drape more or less. For this, I'm just gonna use like a typical skater skirt, something that's a little bit breathy, airy, a little bit lighter, it's meant for movement. So as you can see, the fabric isn't going to cling to the legs here. It's going to sit slightly off of it, and the same is true here. Now, the skirt itself drapes down in a pretty typical fashion, but then we have to consider adding motion and wind to it. So for example, say the wind is moving this way. That's going to affect it differently than if the wind was moving that way. And these things might seem obvious, but these are very particular details that you have to consider when you're drawing the motion of a skirt. All right, so I'm going to bring the opacity down on this one so that we can see the second example a little bit better. And I'm gonna change the color. So here we go, it's sitting on the waist. If the wind is coming in this direction as previously established, it's going to cling tighter to the body and then this side is going to flare out more the amount of flare is really up to you for me i'm just doing like a little bit for the sake of argument but then we have to consider how that wind is also going to affect the bottom since the skirt is not solid in the same way that a human body is solid it's going to ripple in the wind so we have to consider the ripples and now with those, where it protrudes, that's where you're going to add your lines to sort of accentuate uh, the motion of the skirt. And then of course you have the back of the skirt folds, etc. And what this shows us is that the wind is moving in a wave-like fashion underneath the skirt. Now, if there's a stronger wind, there's going to be more waves. As you can see, it's going to be more pronounced, more dramatic, what have you. But at the end of the day, you have to remember to display the motion of the skirt with that wave-like pattern. 
depending on where the wind is coming from is going to affect the waves. So for example, if I have a skirt that is being hit with the wind directly this way, it's more than likely going to flow from that center point outwards. And all of the fabric is going to gather up at the top of that bevel. This is a really like jankety angle. So I'm sorry if it doesn't make very much sense, but think of it as a line with two balls rolling underneath it. So as the balls move outward, they're going to force these lines outward as well. And that's how your skirt's going to roll in the wind. And then taking that motion into consideration, you also have to pair that with the fabric that you're using. For example, this is very clearly a more dynamic pose that this character is using, but her skirt appears stiff because it doesn't move with her. Unlike this drawing where the skirt seems more flowy and the bevels are looser, so you can see that this is a lighter fabric that is moving with her body and with the motions of the ambience around her. This one is somewhere in between. You can see that it's firm enough to hold its own shape, but it does also have a very distinct flow pattern that is also a larger wave. A good way to start a skirt illustration is to start with the pose that you're going to be using. I'm going to just use the same pose for the sake of simplicity and draw a curve to show how you want the skirt to be flowing. And then from there, you can decide to add pleats, which I would recommend because they help you to understand the wave in segments. So if we're going to be using a pleated skirt for this, for example, we can take the curves and we can give them their own pleat. And each of those pleats is also its own segment of that wave. So as you can see, we get that wave-like motion and it's more, it's more prominent. You can see it a lot easier because of the fact that there's pleating there that automatically has lines that curve, that automatically breaks the skirt up into waved segments and allows for you to make a more obvious motion for the skirt that you're drawing. Animating skirts is a little bit more complicated, but this is the start of the basics. You just need to keep in mind the motion of that wave. And it's best to start with one fold and follow it all the way through the animation, then go to the next one, follow that all the way through the animation, etc., etc. Because drawing a skirt and animating it is going to leave you with a whole bunch of lines flying all over the place. There's actually a really good tutorial on Blogspot that I will link in the description that gives really, really good advice on how to do a looping animation of skirts. A fun fact about learning to animate skirts is that it will help you in the long run with animating hair because hair moves in a very similar fashion. It follows the waves of the wind. Um, there are of course flyaways and exceptions to that, but overall the mass majority of the hair is going to follow a wave pattern. I hope that this tutorial was helpful to you and I hope that you learned a little something here. This clears things up and sort of simplifies them for you. Thank you so much and as always guys, stay safe, stay sweet, and stay hydrated.